in it was my best friend. And the only place I could stay is here and look at myself in the mirror. Which is not so weird when you think that my Greek mother would always say to me, Do you have worms in your back? It's because I had so much energy. Even as a twin, whenever my parents were not at home, I would go to the large living room with a big mirror on the wall and I put the music as loud as the stereo can play. And in front of the big mirror, I start dancing as if I'm on the most famous stage in the world. I'm so excited. I jump up and down the big, the soft place couches and then turn on and start taking off my clothes. I just want to be free. Free to feel all this energy running through my body. Free to feel all these feelings and sensations. Free to be me. And then, this harsh voice comes into my mind. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? Are you crazy? Who do you think you are? Stop it. Right now. And I do. Like a scared puppy with a tail under the legs. Fast forward, in my early twenties, this harsh voice is extremely loud and an everyday thing. From the outside, I look like a beautiful, happy young woman, ready to conquer the world. From the inside, I'm too scared and just hate everything about myself. All I can feel is an emptiness. But nobody knows the intense pain in my heart, except my best friend, Natoya. One more time, I'm in this small room with the white walls, with one hand over my forehead and another one on the toilet seat, just wondering, how did I get here? I told myself many times that I would stop, but I would always come back at this moment. I have been eating and then vomiting for two years now, non-stop, and it was never enough. I wasn't thin enough, I wasn't good enough, I wasn't perfect enough, I wasn't beautiful enough, and I wasn't happy. I stand up, and as I've done every time, before washing my face, I look at myself in the mirror with disgust. Only this time something stops me from saying, I hate you. There is a longing in my eyes that makes me put one hand over my heart and start caressing it. Slowly I can feel the warmth of my tears coming down my cheeks. And a new voice appears, talking to my inner child. I love you, Maria. No matter what, I love you. And I don't know how yet, but I promise you we'll get out of this. It's okay. Everything is going to be okay. From that day, my problem stopped being the problem and became my symptom. I didn't want to fix it anymore, nor me. I just want first to understand it and understand myself. I start observing and understand three things. One, that my heart feels a lot. I get excited like a child and I feel the pain like a knife stabbing my heart. But my body doesn't know what to do with all these uncomfortable sensations and painful feelings. I eat compulsively to numb them, as most of us do in different ways. Instead, I need to learn how to just be with them and let them move freely. Our hearts and bodies are like a vast ocean of sensations, always moving, sometimes in big waves, sometimes in small but always moving. Two, 
I realized that what stirs up this uncomfortable and painful feelings is the fact that somehow I betray myself because I don't respect my real needs and desires. I don't speak my truth. I do and say things out of fear and out, out of the insecurity of being rejected. Looking for love outside, I'm crossing my own spirit. Instead, I need to listen more and trust my truth. The truth always heals, even when painful, always heals. And our truth is the light to our path in this life. Three, I recognize that every time I vomit, I don't just want to empty myself from all the food I ate to just stay thin. I also want to empty myself for all these judgments in my mind and paralyzing criticism for everything I do and everything I am. Instead, I need to accept myself and love myself where I'm at, not where I should be. Because when we make self-love a must, transformation can happen even if we are at rock bottom. And after all, our heart's deepest desire is to feel loved. Any holistic approach talks about the mind-body-spirit connection. Well, I believe we need to talk about the mind heart body spirit connection and when i say heart i don't mean the physical organ i mean our emotional world in the medical field we clinicians talk about mental health i want us to talk also about emotional health for ourselves and for our children how well we take care of our hearts the loving space we create to soothe and validate our painful feelings and the loving relationships. Now, we have to share and connect all support our emotional health. And this is the missing link to well-being. So, along my healing journey, I developed many practices to help me consciously nourish my heart. And today I want to share with you the simplest one, because there is extreme power in simplicity. Are you with me? So for a moment, think of a trouble that you may have, a fear, an anxiety, a problem, a judgment about yourself, something that pains your heart. Yeah? And now take your right hand and place it over your heart. Mm -hmm. Breathe in through your heart. And if it helps, you can close your eyes and slowly start caressing your heart as if you're caressing someone you love or a little child. Feel the warmth, smile, touch softly, and say the magical phrase. It's okay. Everything is going to be okay. And now open your eyes. And for the brave ones, if you want, you can also kiss your shoulder like this. <laughs> and say, I love you, your name. I love you, Maria. It's okay. Everything is going to be okay. The more you can do this, the moments that burden your heart, the easier it will be to recover from any pain you may have. The missing link to well-being is us taking care of our hearts. And that first happens when we create a loving space for what is to just let it be with no need to fix anything. Because no matter what, we are always loved.